So you're looking for some portable power on the go. I know I am. I was looking for an ultra portable. There were really only two or three that fell into this category sitting in front of me. Late 2019, Razor Blade Stealth. This is the full HD version. So this is a GTX 1650 uh, 4 gig and a, the Intel i7 1065G7 processor that runs uh, quad core up to 3.9 gigahertz. I have been testing this device as it is the smallest device running a 1650. Unfortunately, what Razer hasn't told us that I found out once I opened the box on this, an $1,800 device, is that this 1650 is Max-Q. 1024 shaders, which is better than the desktop, 896. I have a desktop 1650 upstairs to compare it to. Uh, and slower memory bandwidth. The desktop version has a 128 gigabytes second. This only has 112 gigabytes second. That shouldn't make too much of a difference. The additional shaders may offset it, but really the biggest issue comes into the boost clocks. 1245 megahertz on those is quite slow. I do understand the need because this is essentially an Ultrabook with a desktop GPU in it, essentially, uh, to you know save on those thermal constraints, both power uh, and TDP. Uh, the wattage is a 100 watt power brick, which is already very large is here for size comparison it is a very large power brick considering it is USB-C and it is a small chassis uh, I compared it to my 14 inch Dell work laptop it is it's small it's smaller than that uh, it should be as a 13.3 inch but it's significantly smaller than that and it's significantly lighter even though that laptop is this laptop is made of metal and that one is made of plastic it's great for carrying uh you can lift it up with one hand with absolute ease no issues there um thermals so far have been quite good in fact uh and nvidia control panel actually confirms what gpu z is saying just in case anyone doesn't believe gpu z i don't know who that would be or why but i'm sure somebody out there is probably so still somehow a skeptic now uh, Passmark, 3D, uh, sorry, uh, performance test 9.0, CPU mark was 60th percentile, 2D was 61st, 3D was 77th, memory was 86th, and disk mark was 99th, for a total of the 82nd percentile. It's a quick, quick machine, um, and it runs quite cool. During that same test that we just looked at those results for, we only measured an a maximum 73 on the CPU, 57 on the GPU, and the full 3.9 gigahertz was measured. Now, we're going to run 3D Mark right now. We had to re-download it. Uh, I tried to download it before, and for whatever reason, it did not want to it did not want to launch properly, and it would not display Firestrike. So, deleted it, redid it. Let's go ahead right now and take a look at Firestrike. Where are you? Where are you? There you are. Firestrike regular. This is a, probably one of the best things that we can do to get a gauge on temperatures and power of the unit. Again, very disappointed in the max Q decision. Nowhere on the Razer site does it mention to you at all that you are going to be getting anything other than a 1650. Even the sticker on the laptop itself does not let you know that you are about to purchase a max Q version. For the price that it is, $1,800, that is crazy to me. That's a very expensive laptop that you are not getting as advertised. Um, I'm sure that this is going to run fine. I am sure that this device will perform admirably in in this test. But 
that doesn't change that it's not what I was expecting. Uh, and it's not probably what any other consumers are going to be expecting either, as they're going to be expecting that they're going to get a full 1650 as advertised. So let's take a look at how it does in 3D Mark. And then once we are done with this, we will also discuss the panel. As you can see, there is some ghosting on this panel. This panel is not the best panel, especially for the price that this laptop is. Uh, it has me seriously considering picking up, and I do apologize, I am a little bit sick right now. Uh, it has me seriously considering picking up the MSI Prestige 14, uh, which has the 1650 as well. Also has a 6-core processor, uh, and it is significantly cheaper. Granted, it is not as nice, it is not as gaming-focused, um, but it is a significantly cheaper device at $1,400 to the 6-core, or if you want to get the quad-core that more matches up with this spec, granted it doesn't have that fancy uh, LPDDR4X, uh, you know, 3700 megahertz memory, it has the uh, integrated LP DDR3 2133 megahertz memory, but I doubt that that will make a serious difference. Um, in, and especially because you can have a six core um, processor in it, in a 14 inch that is very, very slightly larger than this. Um, the dimensions are actually almost the same despite that. And then additionally, another option on top of that is the Asus ZenBook 15, which has the screen pad too, uh, and it rings in at also only $1,400. That's a Max-Q uh, 1650 as well, but at least you're told there that that's what you're going to be getting. You're not thinking that you're getting a full 1650 laptop, you know, with the with the full benchmarks marketing as a gaming machine there you're being marketed to is you know hey it's got the screen pad it's got this so um yeah those are those are other options that are in the price range that are well, not even price range that are in the size range of this device the zenbook 15 is obviously going to be the largest it has the biggest panel but it's also extremely slim and small for what it is not to mention it has a second screen built into it so if you're looking for the best workstation that's probably the one that you're going to want uh this finish in a second here and then we'll get some more some more benchmark numbers we can discuss further in the comments why we think Razer didn't tell us that this was a Max-Q device. Pause this while we wait for this to run, come back as soon as we have some results. Okay, here we are. We got a graphics score of 7,650, we have a physics score of 6,900, and a fire strike score of 6,457. Um, this is pretty much in line with what I expected. Let's go ahead and take a look at the thermals here. The processor jumped up significantly more this time, but still not incredibly burning hot, less than I thought it would be. Uh, 89 on one core, although the rest seemed to be around mid 80s, not so much that, that one high. Um, it just doesn't seem like that was too much of an issue. And then down below, the GPU stayed nice and cool at 70 degrees Celsius. Um, Great thermals again, uh, but honestly, this machine, other than the extreme end of portability, which again, the Prestige is so close, offers two more cores, and is $400 less, you know, it, it's probably a better buy. This has style, um, sure, it's got that razor name, and it's got those, those this matte black look, and the blacked out. Um, almost carbon fiber-ish look, but is it worth paying $400 more for uh, slightly less performance as I believe that that is the full, I don't think that that one is the max Q. I'd have to double check that. I may be wrong. I don't, can't say for sure, but it definitely has the additional cores on the processor. 
If I were to do this again, I would probably pick that. In fact, I may return this and you may see a video because I did purchase this one for myself. This isn't a press review or something. This isn't being paid to be said. This is me reviewing this laptop as someone who really wanted a, um, a complete ultra portable for travel. Um, I, I have a tough decision in front of me. And, and again, the ZenBook 15, if, you, if you're looking to do work, you know, the specs, the size isn't that, that too far off. And the specs are essentially all the same for all of them. Uh, the ZenBook 15, I believe, the one place where it really does pull ahead is that second screen. And then I believe it also comes with a terabyte of SSD storage. I could be wrong, but uh, this is only a 512, um, 16 gigs of RAM. But again, really really comes down to what what you want out of this device but right now i think that there are two other better devices on the market if you are not in it for that razor style or the razor experience let me know what you think in the comments um and as an aside i also tried a 27 watt power brick uh, with this just to see a USB-C wall charger uh, just to see it would not register as powering it uh, 65 something more 45 and you know uh, 87 may register as powering it but if you were planning on also taking a small charger with you you know to just power it up while in between using it don't bother um, a very small one like that like a 27 watt won't work all right see you guys in the comments